Hey Floss Tube, this is Brian. Welcome back. This is my 50 second Floss Tube video, and I plan on sharing with you the things that I, I have been working on this week. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome you. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I hope that you enjoy the things that I have to share with you. Uh, if you are returning, welcome, and thank you for coming back to spend time with me. It's been a, a great week. Um, Weather-wise, it has been absolutely wonderful. Uh, we have been here for 15 years, and I do not remember a May that has been as that has been as pleasant as this one. Uh, usually, by this time, we're in the the low hundreds, and we are still in we're still seeing days with 70 degree temperatures, and we even had a little bit of rain again. Uh, this is this is just really strange for May, but it's been really nice. Um, my daughter graduated from high school this week, as I mentioned, and commencement was held in a football stadium uh, outside. And it was, it was perfect weather. It was nice and actually kind of cool, which, which is a real blessing. Uh, usually, graduation like that here, you, it's like 100, 105 degrees and hot and sweaty, but it was really very nice. Um, her graduation has been busy all week. Uh, we had baccalaureate on Sunday, and then, then also her seminary graduation. And that seminary is a class that my church teaches. Um, it, they study the scriptures for four years, and she's graduated from seminary. And then uh, we also had one of, one of her cousins graduated on Wednesday. So we had two graduation ceremonies. Um, so it's been it's been quite a quite a busy week, um, yeah. So I'm we're all we're all down with the the graduation etiquette and what you d should do by now. It, she's my she's my youngest, which so it kind of feels strange. Uh, we're not going to have much to do with uh, my wife and I aren't going to have much to do with school anymore, and that kind of that kind of feels a little bit strange. I think it'll feel a lot stranger back in August when school starts up again. At any rate, um, things are going really well. I just want to respond to a couple of things. So first of all, in my last video I talked about my two rules for neater stitches and I had a request to show a couple of diagrams to kind of explain a little bit more about what I was talking about. So I'm going to try to explain this a little bit better with diagrams. So my first rule is don't carry the thread the same direction that you make your cross, the leg of your cross. So to illustrate this, uh, let, let's look at this diagram and say that we want to make uh, these two stitches. I like to stitch from the top right to the bottom left for my first leg and from the top left to the bottom right for my second leg. So if I were to do that on this first stitch, you will see that if I carried from, from doing that leg to the second stitch, that I am carrying the thread in the same direction that I finished that cross. And you'll also see that it makes it so that the fabric hole that you, are, that, that you go down in for that first stitch gets covered up. It also makes the leg of the stitch a little bit longer than the other the, than the other leg, and if you do that a lot, that is what uh, what causes uh, longer legs and a little bit less neater looking stitches. So if I were to stitch these two stitches, I would stitch this bottom leg the same way that I did before, but I would stitch the top leg from the bottom right to the top left. That way, when I carry my thread over to the next stitch, the, the fabric hole in that, in that corner uh, remains open. And, more, and it's easier to put in stitches in that corner. And also, your legs are going, the legs of the stitch are going to be more uniform. So that's, that's what I mean by that. And uh, basically, uh, diagonal stitching is a system where that that I have come up with to make it so that I always do that without having to think about it. Uh, the second rule, just for uh, just for um, just just for completeness, 
Um, the second rule is not to close in stitches. And that is this. If you see this diagram, if I wanted to make a, a stitch in this, in this location, you can see it's already surrounded by stitches. Uh, the fabric holes are already full of stitches. And so trying to, trying to make a stitch in this location uh, is, is more difficult to make a neat stitch. So I would always, uh, before, I, uh, before I made this stitch, I would make the stitch, I would make the stitch in the, the that's in that empty space first. And that will make it so that my stitching is, that will also help making my stitches neat. So those are my two rules. I hope that that's, I hope that uh, explaining that with diagrams is a little bit more, helps making, make that a little bit more clear. Also, uh, if you noticed, during the week, I released a video uh, sharing with you the spreadsheet that I use to track all of my projects. Uh, and I've had lots of comments about that video. So everybody who is, has, has checked that out, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, I had one person request that I provide uh, a spreadsheet with some sample data filled in so that they could see how things work. And so, I have, if you go back to that video, I have added a couple of links to spreadsheets that have uh, my stitching data that was done in the last half of 2017. Um, I did a, that, um, I think that's a good set of data to show kind of the variations of things. I know that that, that video is a little bit, uh, as I, as I look through it, there are things that I probably could have explained a little bit better. Um, yeah, it's, it's really hard for me to, to explain everything. I should probably, I should have probably written out a whole script and, and read my script to, to make, make sure that I caught everything. But uh, I think people are using, starting to use it a little bit and are, are finding it helpful. Also, when I was making that subset of data, I found a couple of bugs in my spreadsheet. It's nothing catastrophic. Um, it's just a couple of things that make things look better. So if you have downloaded the spreadsheet uh, last night, which was uh, May 24th, 2019, I updated, I updated the, the spreadsheet links to uh, spreadsheets that are um, where I fixed some bugs. So if you want to get the latest version of the spreadsheet, uh, go ahead and check out that video again and download, uh, download the spreadsheet again. Um, I, I, I think now I'm really happy with things are and I hope that I don't have to, to make any other changes. But um, I guess if I do, then I've, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to do releases. But I don't think it's that serious that I need to do that. So that's all of my comments that I want to respond to. Uh, so now I want to talk about something that I would like to stitch. And this is a brand new pattern that was released by Hands Across the Sea Samplers this week. Have you seen it? I just saw it and I, I really like one of the samplers that Nicola has released. And it is this, it's a Bristol, uh, it's a Bristol sampler is what she called it, all red, with several alphabets and a whole bunch of different borders. And for some reason, this just really looks cool to me. I really like all the borders, and and there's some pretty good there's some pretty good fonts for the for the letters too. So I don't know that 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 design looks really cool. I think I'm going to have to stitch that sometime. Okay, so let's talk about what I have been able to accomplish this week. And I'm just going to warn you now, um, I haven't been able to do very much. As I mentioned, uh, we've, had, we've had things a lot of nights this week and have been really busy that way. So I haven't had a lot of stitching time. And I don't know how to say it, I have made a big boo-boo, so I actually considered not making this video, but 
I think if I'm going to document my, my stitching, I need to document the good as well as the bad. And this is, this is pretty bad. So let's talk about what I, I've been stitching this week. Um, I have been working on uh, Four Seasons, a primitive Quaker year. Uh, this is a design by Modern Folk Embroidery and it, it was the stitch along for 2018. And I'll show you a picture of what this looked like the last time you saw it. Um, and I am stitching this on 35 count classic homespun from R&R and I'm using Silks for You PR075, uh, which is a silk floss. Um, it's, a, it's a royal blue, and it's, it's really pretty. So I'll show you uh, what it looks like now. And as you can see, I haven't, it doesn't look like I've had very much progress. So I'm going to tell you I'm going to step through what I have done because you can't see my big mistake yet, and I'll, but I'll show it to you. I uh, finished stitching this diamond motif. I just had to stitch the border around it. And then I came up and stitched this flower. And then I stitched spring. And then I came down here. Just like there's a motif over here, a half diamond, there's another half diamond motif here. And I started working on that, I started working on that motif. And I stitched across this way to about the halfway point. And then I decided I was come, going to come down and stitch this side of the motif. And when I started doing that, I realized that I was out of alignment. Uh, I realized that uh, this side was running into this flower. So I stopped and tried to figure out what I had done wrong. And I realized that what I had done wrong is this leaf right here on this flower is um, there is supposed to be another diagonal stitch. So this leaf is one stitch over, is one stitch too far this way and one stitch not high enough. And I started spring based on that, that leaf. So what that did is that pushed spring over one stitch too far this way and then when I started working on this motif, it was one stitch too far this way. I figured this out Tuesday night. And I was, I was really kind of disgusted with myself um, and dismayed at all of, the, all, of the, all of the stitches that I would have to take out. And then, as I said, we've been really busy and it, it went, I went two nights without working on it. And during that time, I was trying to figure out what am I going to do to, because I was dreading having to, to, to frog all of this. So I thought, well, it'll go faster if I, if I, if I get a seam ripper and use a seam ripper. So, I, so last night I started uh, picking out stitches with my seam ripper. And I got a little bit too enthusiastic and slipped and I have cut fabric threads right there. I cut eight, eight vertical fabric threads because I slipped. So I finished taking this out and I don't know. I think this, I think this project is finished for right now. I mean, I have thought about what I can do and because it's not full coverage, um, I can't just do a spot repair. And I think I know what I could do to fix it. I think I would have to take out all of the, all of the stitches uh, that are on those cut fabric threads. And then I think I could um, take those, fab those threads out one at a time and then replace them with, with threads that I get over here. I think I could weave them back in. I think that would, I think that would do it. And I, would, I wouldn't have to go the entire length of the fabric. I'd only have to go about three inches away from the edge of the design. And I think that would work. But that is a lot of work. And I, I like this project. I don't know that I 
am in, I'm I'm not I'm not in love with it. I'm not I'm not attached to it enough to, to to justify doing that. You know, I'm not de I'm not completely devastated. I'm sad and a little bit embarrassed at what I did. But I'm not I'm not devastated. So, yeah, I this is going to go away for a, probably a long time. I'm going. I'm not going to throw it away. Um, if I ever get in the mood to 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 do that, to try to replace those fabric threads, I may do that sometime. If nothing else, it'll serve as a reminder for me to be a little bit careful when I um, when I pull out my seam ripper. Um, and in in hindsight, the mistake that I made is I was I was working. From the back and I think that if I had been from the front working from the front I think it would have gone better just because uh, because of the crosses this the, the threads stick up uh, a little bit further away from the from the fabric so like I say I'm kind of I'm sad and embarrassed but I'm not devastated I mean if if it was almost finished I would probably be a little bit a little bit more um, devastated about that uh, because I am sad and I'm sad about um, all that I have done on it um, how far I've gotten so that's that's your lesson today I guess is don't be like me <laughs> don't use be careful when you use a seam, seam ripper so um, yeah um, yeah, I think my wife and my, my mother-in-law is down here visiting us this week. I think they're both a little bit more devastated about it than I am. I am stuck in the, I am stuck in the middle with that piece, so if I had been over the hump and, and towards the end, I think I would have been a little bit more. I think I would have been a little bit more devastated. Anyway, so we're going to move on. And we're going to work on something else this week. Um, something that I have been really enjoying stitching to hopefully take my mind off of my, off of my mistake. So, this is what I'm going to work on this week. I am going to work on a mid-Amish life, which is this design. Uh, this is a design that was in Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. Uh, I think it's like... 1987 issues starting with May I think it was in three issues um, and I'll I'll post something different if I'm if I'm wrong but and there we go of course it's a, a triptych of three designs I am stitching them as one piece um, they are it's basically a, a farm and I, I really like how this looks. Um, this is 101 Best Love Cro Projects from, from Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. Um, this is a really cool book. It has a lot of designs that I really like and would like to stitch sometimes. So that's what I'm going to be working on. And I'll show you what it is going to look like when it is finished. Well, no. And I'll show you what it looks like right now. Um, this is where I am right now. As you can see, I'm working diagonally. Um, so I don't know how many diagonals I'm going to be able to put in, but I think I am going to be able to reach the top edge of the piece, which is exciting. Another milestone. So, yeah. So my hope is, uh, well, we're going to start seeing clouds. Hopefully see the, the upper border to match this. And let's see what else we're going to start seeing. I think we're going to start seeing more house. You can kind of see house here. We're going to see more house, more quilt. This and, and we have a Quaker lady hanging quilts. So hopefully we'll see a lot more of that. I am really excited to be working on this this week. It, I think it's the perfect antidote to to the disaster that was last week because <laughs> because I am I'm really excited to do that and it'll be good to uh, to, to, to 
kind of have some time to enjoy it. So anyway, that is all that I have to share with you today. I hope that everything goes well with you. As always, if you have any questions or comments, uh, any, any questions or comments about, um, about what I've shared with you, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will be glad to answer any questions that you have to the best of my ability. As always, you can follow my daily progress on Instagram. Uh, I am at Blitzditch on Instagram. And I think we'll close now. I don't even have enough, I don't even have enough pictures to really justify doing a, a slideshow like I usually do. So there will be no slideshow, uh, just the closing. At any rate, I hope that you have a great week and uh, we will talk to you later. Goodbye.